Welcome. Okay, this is a really good one. So today we're going to look at case one from stage three of the 2025 season of the Financial Modeling World Cup. Now this case tackles a classic valuation problem with a discounted cash flow, a DCF. We will need to work backwards to work out what assumptions have been used to calculate the valuation, but they haven't actually given us the model. So we will need to recreate it based on an email that they sent us with a PDF attachment. So based on what we've been given, we need to build a simple model and run a few scenarios based on the assumptions. But first, we need to build the formulas back into the model or what we think the formulas should be. Okay, let's have a look at what we've been given because um, it's not very helpful. So we can see in the instructions that somebody wants to buy somebody and we've been sent an email. There's a little bit more information here, which is not especially helpful. So let's have a look at the data that we've been sent. And yeah, it's just like that. I mean, we could just grab it, control C and control V, which we could probably do something with. But I think this is probably more of a job for Power Query. So we could go into get data from PDF and see if we can grab it in and get something that's perhaps a little bit more helpful. So it's probably the quickest way of pulling data directly into Excel. And let's have a look at what it looks like. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Let's look at the other one. Okay, there's a little bit more, you can see there's more data on here, but if I look at the columns, it's a bit of a dog's breakfast. So uh, yeah, I think I'm probably gonna go with that one. I think that's going to be quicker. And then I'll just compare and see if there's anything missing. So I'll just load that directly into Excel. And ordinarily, I'd be very happy to work with a table, but I am trying to recreate a financial model here. And I want to be able to pull formulas directly out without having to worry about the consistency of formula that a table will require. So I'm going to just go in, which I don't often do here, but I'll unlink and I'll get rid of the query. And I'm also going to convert it to range. But before I do that, I want to take advantage of this lovely formatting that a table will give us. Maybe something like that. Okay, that's nice. Uh, so there we go. I don't often get that nice formatting. So I'll convert it to range. And now we're just dealing with ordinary Excel. And I'm going to convert it to dollars. So we will go in and just convert that to dollars. Okay. Looking good. And now let's look at the data that was missing. So if I go back into here and we'll see that there was 2023. So there's some dates, actual and first two years are actual. The final years are forecast. And we've also got a valuation with a number there, which is missing. So I'll go down to here and just paste that valuation number. Okay, and we'll just put that in there. And 2023 plus one. Okay, good. And the first two years were actual. And the final years were forecast. And I might just change the background color just to make it easy. For me to see the difference between the actual and the forecast because I think that's going to be important here and all right okay looking good I am just going to turn my grid lines on because I like to see what I'm doing and while I'm there I'll just add focus cell so that you can see what I'm doing okay all right let me just go back and make sure that I've included everything Yes, I've got my terminal value. Terminal value is there. Fantastic. So the first thing we need to do is to work out the discount rate that has been used for the valuation. So going back to the model, we have got here a terminal value 
and a net cash flow. Now I assume that that is that plus that. Now I think I'm going to need this formula, so I'll go in and just add this in like that. So I will have to recreate this model, I think. And uh, we need to work out how did they get to the valuation number. So if they use that as an investment, uh, what is the rate of return of this series of cash flows? So if I just put this in here temporarily, just to see, and then if I use an IRR function, that will give me the rate of return. So that's the initial investment and that's the cash flows. So let's see if that is the discount rate. So looking back at the PDF, okay, yes, 15% is the correct answer. And looking good, okay. And the next thing we need to work out is what is the six times terminal value multiple based on so they told us back here that there is a six times exit multiple so we will put that in as an input assumption so that is your we'll put that in as an assumption i think that is also going to be an assumption somehow we have to work backwards and work out how did they come up with this terminal value so the question is asking which was the input that they used? Was it revenue, gross or up margin? Normally it's free cash flow. It doesn't say free cash flow here. So we've got to work out what they used to come up. So how did they come up with this number and multiply it by six? So if I divide, it gives me one, three, seven, four, aha. Okay, so that is the EBITDA. All right, so that is the correct answer and that is one of the options that we've been given. Okay, so that is, uh, okay, so that's how they have come up with that number. All right, that is good to know. Okay, and going on to the next, what would be the valuation if the COGS is at 40% instead of the assumption that's been used? Okay, well, I guess we have to figure out what the assumption has been used. So I'm going to just work out the COGS as a percentage of the revenue. Okay, so 45%. This is why I didn't want to have this as a table because I want to be able to convert it. So it's 45%. It's copied across. Okay, it is consistently 45%. I'm going to have to recreate this model. So I'll have to use that as an input assumption. So I'll just format it like that and then what I'll do is take that revenue and multiply it by my 45 percent ah and I end up with a circular reference of course because I have got a formula in here so I'll just need to control c control shift v to hard code it and that will stop the circular reference okay so 945 is what it was 1228 good copy it across okay looking good Control Z, Control Y, just to make sure that the numbers haven't changed. Okay, so that is 45%. Now, the question that we've been asked is, what would the valuation be? So what would this number down here be if this number were 40%? And of course, nothing changes because I haven't built my model yet. So I'll need to reinstate my formula. So that is now a formula. That's good. This is fixed costs, which is not going to change. So I'll leave that alt equals, that is a sum, copy across. Okay, so that is now a formula. The next one is working capital investment. That's not gonna change, capex not gonna change. And alt equals, we can work that out, 255, control Z, control Y to make sure that it hasn't changed. Copy across, okay, so that is now a formula. That is not a formula. So let's convert that to a formula. We know that that is EBITDA multiplied by six, which is a multiple, okay? And then that gives that. And finally, that also needs to be a formula. Now we know that the discount rate is 15% based on that. That should not be there. So I need to remove that and I'll need to hard code this and convert that back 
to 15%. Okay. And we can then do our discounted cash flow. So that will be MPV. The rate is 15%. Copy across 6277. Control Z, Control Y, just to make sure that it hasn't changed. Okay. Looking good. So that is my valuation. And now the question was, what would my valuation be if my COGS was 40%? All right. So we can see that that's changed. 7372. 7372, 574. Yes, 574. Okay, good. That is the number. And the next one is a similar question. What would the valuation be if the working capital is lower by 50,000 for each year of the forecast? So basically, I need to take my working capital investment and lower it by 50,000. Now, I'm going to put this as an input over to the side here. And ordinarily, I would never, never, never hard code numbers into formulas, but we are trying to get this done as quickly as possible. So we want to lower that. And I'll copy that across. That's exactly the same for each one. So if that was zero, make sure that we change that back to 45 the way it was. 45, okay, 6277. And 50,000, put that back in, lower it. 6445. 6445169. Okay, that looks like it is one of the options. Okay, good. All right. And the final question is a similar thing. What would the valuation be if the revenue growth is higher by five percentage points of the assumption? So, of course, we need to work out what the assumption is for revenue growth. So, we can calculate that year on year by saying the forecast number divided by the previous year minus one. That's going to give us the revenue growth, which is 40%. Let's calculate that for each year. Okay. So we can see that a little bit more complicated. We can see that the revenue is increasing or decreasing over time. So let's cut and paste that across and we might just hard code this. Control shift V, control shift five. And yeah, same thing here. So we'll just copy and paste. So that's now hard coded and we can recreate the model by saying previous one multiplied by one plus the increase. Control C, copy across. Okay. That did not change. Let me check. Control Z, Control Y, just to make sure that the numbers haven't changed. Okay. So then the question asked us to change it by 5%. So let's take the, what it was before and add 5%. So it's changes from 10 to 15. Okay. Let's just set that back to zero, six, four, four, five and five, eight, six, oh, seven. So let's see. No, that number is not correct. Okay. So that should Ah, uh, and yes, of course, we have to remember to change that BAP to its original value. Okay, 6277, 5%, 8439. So you can always tell if you get it wrong if the uh, number is not there. 8439, let's have a look. 8439538. Okay, looking good. All right, we are done. We have got 150 points, hopefully, in the bag.